A lot of people want to know what dreams are like for blind people. One of the things that used to happen as a child, I, I had several reoccurring nightmares. My parents had a convertible for a while, and I used to dream that they would be driving it up a hill and it would go up such a steep hill that I would tumble out the back of it and they didn't know it. <laughs> and that was my dream. I'd be falling out of the back of the car and the car would still be going up the hill. I have a food obsession. Food's a hobby of mine. I love to eat different foods. I love to cook different foods. I love to talk about food. I love to smell it. And I have no idea what any of it looks like. I often wonder when I eat stuff, hmm, how long has that jar been in there? What was the expiration date on it? And I'm one, I can't taste moldy cheese. I can't tell by the taste. And so I've occasionally picked up both moldy cheese and moldy bread and eaten them and not known it. In the early 90s, I was vacationing with a friend of mine in San Francisco and we happened to go to a restaurant where they had a coffee roaster set up and running. At the time, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a giant rock polisher, and I asked the waiter why they had a huge rock polisher in their restaurant. He said, oh, that's my coffee roaster. Come here, I'll show you how it works. When he showed me, he pointed all the audio signals out to me. And at the time, I thought, hey, this is great. I'm going to do this someday. When I went in 02 and 03 to look for work, I was met with a lot of resistance because nobody knew how to roast coffee by audio. And of course, that was a new one for me because the guy that roasted coffee with me never said a thing about color. When I came across these types of people, of course, they didn't know how you could roast by sound or smell. And since they couldn't imagine that happening, they weren't very confident in my abilities. So after looking for about a year, that's why I opened this, is because I couldn't find work and I thought I roasted good coffee, so I refinanced my house and started my own company. I can't visually view the bean, so I roast by what the bean sounds like tumbling in the roaster. Aside from listening to what the beans do, I also smell what they do. Well, we're almost to first crack here. We're gonna look at this coffee. Now smell that, and you'll smell the woodiness in it. The uh, odor of the bean changes during the roasting process. And so I get to experience that. When I started the roastery here, I wanted to learn more about coffee. So I started to ask around to the different coffee shops in town when I would go to try to sell them coffee. And I met a woman who owned Buchanan's Coffee here in town. She said, well, I've got this little coffee shop on Broadway up by Pearl Street. It's not making any money. Buy it from me. So I went over to it and I sat down. And in three hours, I counted over 150 sets of footsteps that went by. One thing I was sure of is there were never more than 27 seconds between people. So at 1.30 in the afternoon, after I had counted over 150 people walking by that didn't stop in, I said to myself, well, that's a lot of traffic. I think I'll buy this coffee shop and put good food in it. Coffee in a lot of ways is like wine. Every year, beans change. Even if I buy it from the same farm next year, it'll still taste different than it did this year. And so 
what I'm noticing in the coffee culture myself is that the coffee drinkers are more selective in their tastes. So I generally have over 20 kinds of beans and a lot of them are, are not easy to find so they can't find the same bean in one of the markets. One day I want to do an in-the-dark coffee tasting so that people will get the experience of a real blind taste test. They won't be able to look at what they're drinking. They'll just have several samples in front of them. There's other ways to take in your world other than sight and it really isn't that hard to do. You have to adapt to it, but you can do it.